Um, I'm Dr. Barbara Slade, and I am a medical officer in the Immunization Safety Office at the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. Um, we just published in um, the Journal of the American Medical Association the first comprehensive summary of adverse events that were reported after receipt of the human papillomavirus vaccine to the um, VAERS system. This is the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, which is a voluntary system that collects reports from individuals who feel that they had an adverse event, a bad health outcome, after receipt of a vaccine. It is co-run by the FDA and the CDC, and anyone can report the person who received the vaccine, the par a parent of the person who received a vaccine, um, a friend, a healthcare provider, the person who administered the vaccine. Um, the manufacturer actually makes many of the reports to the VAERS system. Um, sometimes there can be erroneous reports. Any of the reports that are put into the VAERS system are simply um, what we called temporally associated with the vaccine in a, in a time period after receipt of the vaccine. So a report to VAERS does not mean that the vaccine caused the adverse event. But we know this report covers from the time of licensure of the vaccine, which was June of 2006, through the end of 2008, so through December 31st, 2008. Um, during that time, there were 23 million doses of the HPV vaccine distributed in the, in the United States, and there were 12,424 reports made to the VAERS system. What we don't know is this is how many doses that the manufacturer sent out. What we don't know is how many of those were actually given um, to individual people. Um, we, you know, most people think it's probably a fairly good estimate because um, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of doses given out. But you also have to remember that this is a three dose vaccine. So individuals are exposed to the vaccine three times. They get a first dose, two months later, they get a second dose, and then four months after that, they get a third dose. The, this vaccine is to prevent infection with the human papillomavirus vaccine. This is the virus that causes cervical cancer in women and um, that's the main reason, that's the current licensure for the vaccine. So it's an anti-cancer vaccine to prevent infection with the human papillomavirus and thus ultimately to prevent cervical cancer in the United States. Every year, 11,000 women in the United States become infected with the HPV virus and 4,000 women die from cervical cancer. So this is a very important step to preventing cervical cancer and deaths from cervical cancer. Um, most of the things that are reported to VAERS and um, are actually happen after the vaccine are just coincidental. Um, a person gets a vaccine and then something happens to them, which probably would have happened anyway. Um, the swine flu from 1976 vaccine is the one case where we do have a causal association established between receipt of the vaccine and the occurrence of Guillain-Barre syndrome um, within a short time period after receipt of the vaccine. So it meets all the criteria for there being a causal association established. It is actually is the only event for which, adverse event for which a causal association has been established. It's very difficult to do that. So I'm not saying that vaccines could not possibly cause something. It's just very difficult to make that association. Okay, the, the, the most common event that occurred after the vaccine was syncope, that is fainting after receipt of the vaccine. This generally occurs within the first 15 minutes of the receipt of the vaccine, and it's um, it's the same thing that we see 
um, with any kind of needle stick, um, when people get their blood drawn, when people donate blood. Um, you hear about people fainting. I used to be in charge of a blood donation center, and this was a very frequent occurrence to happen, particularly in adolescence. Then the other most common events um, were pain, redness, swelling at the injection site, very typical of vaccines. Um, the next most common were nausea, dizziness, um, nausea, and oh, and headache. Those were the, the most common events. So these are very, are, you know, non-serious things that happen, very well could be coincidental um, after receipt of the vaccine. So those were the most common events that happened. Um, then we also looked at events that were reported um, in the trials for licensure of the vaccine. We looked at the serious events. Those are the main um, adverse events that we review. We do a, a medical review of the adverse, the serious adverse events after vaccination. And by a serious adverse event, I mean one that resulted in hospitalization, death, or permanent disability. Um, and then the other thing, the other things that we looked at that are mentioned in the paper were concerns that have been brought up um, by the public and have been seen on, you know, on the popular in the popular press on some of the television shows. So we we tried to look at the events that were of most concern, um, and we really didn't see anything unexpected um, from what we normally from what we often see after vaccines. Um, the syncope was, as I said, the most common event, and that was that was somewhat expected given the age group that this vaccine is is um, targeted at. Um, we did have two young girls who developed a very serious neurologic disorder some weeks to months after receipt of the vaccine. Um, they developed a, a disease, not exactly, but very close to what's popularly known as Lou Gehrig's disease or amyotropic lateral sclerosis. We don't know that the vaccine caused the, that, those, that disease in those two young girls, um, but there are a group of academic um, researchers who are very interested in this and who are studying these cases. And unfortunately, both of these girls have died and um, so they're studying uh, you know, material from the autopsies as well to see if first we can figure out what disease exactly these, these girls have since it doesn't quite fit the picture, the clinical picture um, that is normally seen and then to see what event could have triggered this, whether it be vaccine or something else. Um, we looked at Guillain-Barre um, and we did not see an increase in the number of cases of Guillain-Barre that you would expect um, people of that age in that time period to have to develop who did not receive vaccines. So we were not bothered about that. The one thing we did see an increase in reports of was a venous thromboembolic events or blood clots. Um, we saw an increased number of those compared to the same age of young women um, who received other vaccines. Um, but however, I should caution that all of these women, well, 90% of the women, had one of the known risk factors for developing blood clots. Most particularly, they had a history of also receiving um, an estrogen-based birth control means. Um, so, it, so again, it's not surprising that they had blood clots, but the thing that's interesting is that it was increased compared to other young girls of the same age. Now, this vaccine continues to be, as far as we can tell, a safe vaccine. Um, we will continue to monitor the adverse events after vaccine. And if we see anything that is of concerning, we will, we will let the public know immediately about that. Um, but it still appears to be a safe and effective vaccine as it was when it was recommended.